Hi, this is Yesenia, the training coordinator here at 3D Space Pro. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an organic love knot ring. I'm going to go ahead and come into Firestorm. I'm going to come into my jewelry tab, select ring layout, and enter in a size 7 finger round. Select enter. In design, I'm going to come into my pull tool. I'm going to select my finger round, pull both sides. Now I just want this to be wide enough in order to make sure that I am able to wrap my image around in order to trace it. I'm going to take that surface and I'm going to unselect pull both sides and pull it up. And I'm going to pull it up one millimeter. Because I'm going to be using my pipe tool, I want to make it two millimeters thick. My cylinder tool calculates the radius rather than the diameter. So if I'm looking for two millimeters, I need this to be one millimeter above my finger round because I don't want my ring cutting into my finger round. So now that I have my solid, I'm going to come into file and I'm going to import my knot ring image. So I'm just going to select open. Now I'm going to place the image on my actual solid. So I want to make sure that I select wrap around. Now I'm going to wrap this image around. And again, you can make it either bigger or smaller depending on what you're looking for. And I'm going to wrap this around my actual ring. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the spline tool, I'm going to go into 3D, and I'm going to actually begin to trace my image. So I can come in here and use this as a guideline. Because it is an angle, I'm going to go ahead and trace this to where I would need my actual points to be. Because you want to keep in mind that wherever you connect your points, is exactly where you're going to have your control points when you once you begin to move this over under. So you always want to keep in mind of where those would need to be. Now I can come in here and continue to trace out my line of where my actual ring would be all the way through and just connect that. So I'm going to go ahead and hide both my image and my solid. As you can see, this is the curve that I have and it is one millimeter above the finger round. Using my move tool, I can go ahead within my select, I'm gonna select the line, right mouse click on top of that line and add a knot. So I can add extra control points to my curve in order to get this exactly where I need it to be. Now, I'm gonna come into my top view so I can go into my trimetric from the top left hand corner and go to top. I'm going to go ahead and with my move tool, I'm going to select my line. Now, as you can see, extra control points come out from this line as opposed to just the points on the actual line. I want to go ahead and use these extra control points just because they always give me a smoother lines rather than using the points on the lines that can sometimes create line tension. When you create line tension, your line goes a little bit out of whack and you're not able to get that smooth finish that you're looking for. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and fix this from the top exactly to what it is I'm looking for in order to get my love knot ring. So you're basically making this um, to look almost like a pretzel, to be honest. Um, so you're just going to continue to move this line up and down again depending on what you need and what you're looking for. If need be, you can always add, again, extra control points. Just right mouse, right mouse click on top of that line to add a knot, and you're able to better control these curves or your spline to let you actually trace out. So from the side view, you can also go ahead and fix the side of your actual band as well. Now, what I'm going to begin to do is actually work on my over under. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my image just to see it as a reference as far as what I need to do on my actual ring. So if we start from the left hand side, you can see that the first section goes under. So rather than moving under, I'm actually going to move this control point up. I'm not going to take the actual under piece because I don't want to move it down lower to the point where it's cutting into my actual finger rail. What I'm going to do is take the cross section point above that and move that up. So again, I'm just going to select the points holding down control and I'm going to move this up. Now I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to continue to move and rotate my points until I get what I'm looking for. And I want to make sure that I get the height as well that I'm looking for because since you are making this a cylinder, if you don't make this high enough, 
once you come out in wax and cast, it's not even going to look like an overhander ring. It's just going to look like a big chunk of metal. Um, and it's something you want to stay far away from. So now that I have that over, I'm going to come into the next section. So because this line was under, I went ahead and did the cross section up. Now that I need to go over, I can go ahead and use that drag line because I don't want to move anything under. So now I'm going to select my points and begin to move these up. So that's going to be the over part. So as you can see, it goes under and then it goes over. So now in the next point, it goes down below. So again, I don't want to move it into my finger rail. So I'm going to use the cross section line, which would be the one on the side that connects to the rest of the shank. And I'm just going to click on my line, select my point, and move that up. Again, you want to keep in mind that you want your line to go smoothly. So when you get this harsh curve here, you want to make sure you use those control points as well in order to create a nice, sleek, and smooth line. So once again, just selecting those points, moving them up above where they need to be. And you can just keep maneuvering and moving these lines up and down until you get exactly what you're looking for. Now once again, um, you just want to use the control points that come out from the line as opposed to the points on the line just because they give you a smoother finish. And you want to just continue and go through this until you get exactly what you're looking for and you're satisfied with the lines that you have. So that's how I created my over under. Now, if I was to come in and select my line and go into cylinder, again, the cylinder creates the calculates the radius, not the actual diameter. So if you need this to be two millimeters, you want to cut this in half and type in one enter. So you're looking to get one millimeter. As you can see, it didn't actually do my cylinder in one millimeter only because of the curvature that it has on this ring. It's not able to calculate. So I can do one of two things. I can either select my split curve, which is in my sketch box. Select my line and cut it in half according to my finger rail. As you can see those points that come out, that's exactly where my line is going to be split. Or I can directly click on my actual line. So find a point. If I double click on that point, you can see where it splits my point. And then I'm going to come in here, split this point here. and then continue to split it all the way through. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and select my curve. And I'm going to come into cylinder. Once again, I'm only doing um, half of what I'm actually looking for because the cylinder tool calculates the radius and not the diameter. So since I'm looking at half two millimeters, I'm actually entering one. And I'm just going to continue to do that all the way through. And you can also create this in a pattern. So if I was to turn this off, let's say I'm going to take my curve, I'm going to split it in half this way. The rest of my curve, I'm actually going to go ahead and fill, so make sure that it's one continuous line. So find the points in which your lines break, and then fill them through. So I'm going to take this point here, fill that in. Just continue to fill that all the way through. So now if I take my cylinder, if I take my sphere actually, I'm going to go ahead and connect it to that point. I'm going to type in 2 millimeters. So as you can see I have my sphere. With my pull tool I'm going to select my actual sphere. I'm going to come into Alt on my keyboard. I'm going to select my Z axis which is the blue arrow on my center universe and I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to click and drag down and you're basically just squishing that sphere to make it look like an ellipse. Now I'm going to go into Alt one more time on my keyboard, select the x-axis, which is a red arrow in the center of the universe, in order to get this to be an ellipse, or almost like an egg shape. Okay, once you get what you're looking for, you want to select your solid with your move tool. You're going to move it up to your point. Now, you're going to select your move along trajectory. Take that top section of your line, you're going to click on that. 
And on the left hand side under your move options, you're going to create patterns. So you're going to hold down control on your keyboard in order to create a copy of that cylinder. And you're going to bring it all the way down to the very end. Now as you can see, just like you're making a pattern for anything else, you receive your count. And you can go ahead and enter the number of um, the milligram that you're going to need. If you find that the spacing is too grand, you can always go back and enter either a higher number or a lower number in case you entered a little bit too much. Now once you get this exactly to where you want it to be, you're going to come into your move tool. You're going to go ahead and select your sphere. Now because it isn't a pattern, if I rotate one, it's going to rotate all. So what I'm going to do is take my red arrow, rotate it in at an angle because I want this to look like rope, not just like sphere. So as you can see with that ellipse that I went ahead and took, I made it into a rope. So now when you combine this piece, rather than having a complete um, smoothed out cylinder, you have now just created the exact same ring with rope. And you can continue to finish off the rest of that band in order to create the ring that you're looking for, which is this love knot ring. Thank you.